We're locked and loaded for another great show. Week two of OTAs right here in Ashburn. A dynamic duo show you how to lock down receivers. Why don't our D tackles get any respect? Now I'm going to talk some possible landing spots for D Hop. Ooh, and it all starts right now. Center. I'm Michael Jenkins. A couple DBs here. We got Fred Smoot. We got Sean Springs and a man who's used to double coverage, Santana. They know me well. well. They know me well. <laughs> they know me well. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, you gotta, it's got to be fun because we're less than 100 days mm -hmm. away from the start of the NFL season. You start to get that hankering a little bit. It's, it smells like football. It does. Now, you know, it smells like a locker room. You can tell because the guys are kind of more hands and ready to go. So, hey, I, I, I love it. I can't wait. You never show up to the practice when you play. Yeah, so I always show up to practice. Come on, hey, what, what are you talking about? about? Listen, on, a, a pair of lips to tell a lie, son. Yeah. And that's what you're doing right now. Because <laughs> one thing y'all can say is I love practice. Now, I used to love to practice. Yeah, he like being out there. He's yeah. want to hear his mouth. <laughs> he let me hear his own mouth. <laughs> well, let's get to what we've seen out here, here in Ashburn, as we get ready for week two. We'll go back to week one. Time now for our mission debrief presented by FedEx, where now meets next. And what did you guys see last week? I see these guys moving around. I see fluent movements, and I miss these drills. My feet don't miss these drills, but I miss those drills because it gets you ready to go out there and make plays. I see precise ball deliveries by the quarterback, man. Our, our number one QB. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The old mm -hmm. airwolf. I've seen a guy spin a ball like that uh, before, too, Santana. Now, hey, now, you, now, you're talking about Floyd Hips, never Mississippi State guy. You should look like you back in the day. Hey, hey, man, hey, don't, don't, get, don't, get, don't tell him that. Uh, I'm saying it's steaks and weights. He'll be <laughs> 180 in no time. <laughs> Here's another thing I like. I like the versatility of the offense. You got B. Rob out there catching balls. So yeah. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. You got Curtis Samuels out there running his routes. Man, we know he's going to probably be a dynamic uh, you know, uh, player in his offense, just knowing what you know this offense brings to his capability. I think his numbers about to skyrocket. I'm, I'm just gonna tell the truth, mm -hmm. and this is what I see from Sam Howell. I know y'all don't want to hear this, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. reminds me of one Tony Romo. Oh, the way, oh, no, oh, the way man. the ball leaves his hand. Watch this. I'm talking about effortless throws. Tony yeah. could make every throw, and Tony was a better athlete than most people gave him props mm -hmm. for. Yep, I could dig it. So when you think about that. Everyone's going to focus on Sam Howell. He's yep. a quarterback. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But what are some other storylines, some other guys that you're looking at specifically when you look at some of this footage? Me, myself, I, you know, of course, it's Emmanuel Forbes to me. Mm -hmm. Just how fast can he catch on to the pro defenses? Course, how fast Gotta can he catch guy, on to mm -hmm. the speed? Is he going to be ready day one? And I think he is going to be ready day I one. I think one of the biggest storylines before you start, uh, Sean, is the offensive line. I think one of the things we want to see is these guys, how they can, you know, uh, communicate right now mm -hmm. and get things rolling before camp come in. You mm -hmm. want to see this offensive line group being one of those groups that's saying that when we take this break in June, because that's mm -hmm. always going to be the indicator that, hey, it's almost football time. We take that break. When we come back in training camp, they got to be one. Yep. You got to be as one. It can't be saying we still trying to learn right now. Because you mm -hmm. want that quarterback to be comfortable mm -hmm. so he can go out there and execute those plays. Mm -hmm. And when you think of a quarterback, offensive line, you got to think about EBs. Yeah. Offense. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. You hear about Andy Reid was a coach and he was the head coach of Kansas City Chiefs mm -hmm. and Eric B. Enemy was the offense coordinator. We get to see that guy mm -hmm. firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. See what he does and the excitement he brings with a quarterback, offensive line, the skill guys he mm -hmm. have around it. I'm excited to see that offense this year under EB's leadership. How much can you take away from OTAs as opposed to training camp? You know, because it is a it different. Varies. It, I mean, it, it's, it, it varies. Man. You, you don't get a lot of guys that yeah. come. You know, some yeah. of the guys show up, some of the guys yeah. don't. Yeah. But I think too, when you in that, when you in training camp, mm -hmm. it, it counts now. It matters. All yeah. that stuff that you had going on in your mind doing OTAs, planning those trips before training camp, you have that behind you now. Now well, you come in training camp with a full focus of knowing I have to prepare now to go and attack this. You know, week one. Well, mm -hmm. let me let me say this for OTAs. Let me know. One year we had OTA, OTAs. Greg Williams defense. Smoot and I were on the same page and the secondary seemed like we were in a unit. So I felt like that was the first time I felt like the defense was going to be really good because we didn't have, we went to camp not having to learn. Mm -hmm. We yeah. went to camp 
ready to yeah. go. Yeah. And I was like, well, now we just can focus in camp, just focus on just getting our bodies ready, get better. But we were already on point of it. And that's what people take for granted. These mm -hmm. times are right now to yeah. build that confidence up, yeah. Yeah. you know, individually and as a core. So when you come to training camp, like, like you just mentioned, you mm -hmm. come there with that mindset already that, hey, we good. All right. we gotta do is tighten up a little, yep. you know, mm -hmm. things here and there, and we can rock and Let's roll. Let's be honest, the difference between OTAs and training camp, OTAs, everybody job still safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come training camp, every day somebody getting fired. It's yeah. a part yeah. of the process yeah. to trim down yeah. to the 53. So when training camp comes, it's some guy's last chance to leave an impression, yep. not just on his coaching staff, but on the league as a whole. Yep. Yep. A lot of focus has been on the secondary here in Washington this offseason. You heard Fred talk about it. This past April, the Commanders spent their first two picks in the draft on defensive backs, Emmanuel Forbes and Quan Martin. So to help school this young secondary, let's hit the practice field. Time for our field pass brought to you by the Washington Times. Oh yeah, now we outside to give you a little knowledge on wide receivers, cornerback relationships. We're going to start with the old wide receiver against the young cornerback first to show you some tricks of the trade. Then we're going to go with the old cornerback against the young wide receiver to show some tricks of the trade on how we get our job done. Tanner, talk to him. Well, it was, it was pretty simple for me. You know, I was one of those guys that um, I didn't watch a lot of film, you know, especially if I was going against Sean Springs or Fred Smoot. I didn't watch a lot of film. No. <laughs> you know, I had, I had to give them a little taste of their own medicine. But nah, truly though, I was always one of those guys that I kept it simple because I knew it was a guy like Sean out there every week that I played against. When I mean by a guy like Sean, Sean was one of those guys who was great at studying, you know, things that you did. Like he watching your body from how you cut, how you plant, how you catch the ball, how you locate the ball, and even how you line up. And so mm -hmm. I remember Sean mentioning to me one day in practice, like, Tan, I saw you looking outside, so I just knew you had something going on outside. And I didn't comment on it because I want him to think that, but at the same time, me knowing that Sean was going to pay attention to that, now when I do that the next time, I got to run that right outside because I want him to not know when I'm doing those certain things. Certain tricks like that was kind of always in my back pocket. Now, another thing I would use against you guys is how I locate the ball, when, when I'm locating the ball. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm sitting here, if, if Smooth got me, you know, we going man to man and he's running with me, Young receivers normally just sit there, big eyed, right. googly eyed. They looking up. A, a, a small defensive back like Fred, no. offhand or no, near hand, right he that. playing right through that. He's yeah. looking for my eyes. He's waiting for those eyes. So he, the, I'm, I'm pr probably practically never going to catch that ball. Yeah. What I would do last minute, I would I would make adjustments or hesitations. If I see the ball coming, I would do something to make him counter, to make me stop. And then knowing now, last minute, I can attack the ball. Mm -hmm. Or if I can't do that, knowing that he saw that before. Yeah. Just at the last minute, just try to make sure that he don't think the ball coming. Yep. Relax myself. I'm doing the ball drop, yep. catch it at the you know the lowest point. Things like that are some of the things that a, a older guy would do to a young guy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I mentioned to you guys earlier is that the young guys fall for the banana and the tail right, right, all, all the time. time. Yeah. The old guys is the ones you got to be you know worried about because they're so savvy. They don't watch you so long. They don't play it against you so long. Mm -hmm. Especially in practice, you, you're not beating the old guy with those tricks. You just got to go out there mano a mano and beat the guy. But when a young guy, I'm ready knowing that, look, he's going to come in here. He's running 100 miles and running. So I got to make sure I beat him by giving him a little tactics, some of my old veteran savvy, and also making sure that I can go pound for pound when, when it comes to real. I got to check him running, out running him or just out routing him. Yeah, yeah. So you basically take your, your savviness and your of the game to use it against him because you know he's going to play. No doubt. And the same thing for me when I play guys like Tanner, I knew, first of all, Tanner was unique in the sense that, <clears throat> and you should know Smooth, he's one of the few guys who were considered a speed guy. They can who, stop. Who can stop and <laughs> yeah. actually run routes. Mm -hmm. So the thing yeah. that was unique about Tanner is mm -hmm. I would try to show him things like, so I, uh, Tanner's going to do something. So we plan, and I was like, if Tanner, let, let's just take press coverage. Yep. Tanner was excellent getting off the ball. Right. Yep. So I would show here sometimes, mm -hmm. knowing that I was going to jump here because he was backside three by one getting inside. So yep. I would always line up here on Tanner, and then I would move at the last minute to see if i give him something. Or if I was playing off on Tanner, right at the top, right at the top, I knew Tanner would get something. I would just keep that leverage I would try to get on that hip because Tanner, Tanner had, if he, he had so many tricks. tricks yep. If you stayed in front of him, he would just make you move. And I would just pick a side and force him to a direction to see if he could play. Most of you guys have seen him on tape. 
He scored two touchdowns in the Monday Night Dallas game. Very quickly on a veteran guy like Aaron Glenn. He was out there by himself. I would have seen that the week later and said, one thing I'm not going to do is get beat on the post. Mm -hmm. So I would start playing him and studying and trying to force him to my help and where, where I could get help. And that's some of the things, just let me comment on that. A lot of the, the uh, young defensive backs don't understand that you don't have to, you're not out there by yourself. Now, I understand man coverage uh, yeah. sometimes puts you in that situation, yep. but majority of the time, I still got somebody in the middle. You got somebody there. I you got know somebody. I mean? So just know that, you know, especially teams are always poised to know that, hey, we got we got a kill out there today, so we're going to make sure we give you somebody. You know, yeah. you're always going to have somebody behind you, and so that's some of the things that they need to know. And that's the difference between a youngster and a veteran. The youngster is going to use all the talent in the world to beat you, yeah. while the veteran is going to use his mind. Yeah. And that's the difference between a great corner and a good corner and a great receiver and a good wide receiver. Now, Fred, Sean, and Tanner weren't the only alumni to hit the field this week. Several Washington legends were back at the team facility to meet with current players and take in a commander's practice. A cool opportunity for the alumni to share their stories and experiences with the team. Mr. Clinton Portis, first off, welcome back. Good to have you out here at practice. Tell us a little bit about what you saw. Man, you know, I just think the tempo, you know, it's a different energy. Uh, I think Coach B. Enemy doing a good job, everybody learning. Uh, but for, just to see the guys fly around, you know, this is that time of year where it's all hope. You know, everybody hoping uh, for a Super Bowl and, and something dramatic. But just to see the, the tempo, you know, how quick they were in and out of the huddle to the line, uh, guys knowing their assignment, you know, that's the positive of, of today. Well, it's just glad, glad to be able to uh, come home, I guess, in, in a way. It's uh, a great facility. The players really look good out there. I was really impressed with the practice. But for me, just coming back, it brings back a lot of old memories. And, and all those years that, well, we were at the old Redskin Park, which is now Commander's Park here, uh, before they built this. But it was, uh, you know, it still brings back those same feelings. Ron knows the players, you know, his, his pulse is how do he get the guys to go because he has experience having been an ex-player, but he knows what these guys are doing, going through. And then, and then I think a consistent voice, he has the pulse of the team. So it should be a great time. Man. Would he be, you're going to get tempo whether you want it or not, but it's also how the young men advance from it. You go from the classroom to come here to the field. And when you're young, you're nervous as heck. You don't want to make errors, but I judge both sides of the ball. It was an enthusiastic work about it. There's a sharpness. I didn't see the ball on the ground. Everything's competitive. I mean, the defense should win. They know it's pass. But it was, it was what I was looking to see. You never know what you're going to see. And I'm hard to please. I was pleased. Sticking on the defensive side of the football, how about the defensive tackle room? Since the start of last season, John Allen is one of seven players in the NFL to have at least 30 quarterback hits and 15 tackles for loss. And if you ask him, that type of play needs to be the new standard. And when you talk about being a professional, he is exactly what coaches look for when you talk about developing a young team and building a team defense around. John Allen is a professional. And beyond a professional, he's emotionally attached to this team. He grew up in this area. Mm -hmm. What he fights for is pride. Every time he goes out there, you can see that he's the type of leader you want. Like, I love my D-line. I love Canadian Griffin, all the guys I had. I never had a John Allen, though. Blue, we never had a John Allen. <laughs> difference maker. More than anything, difference, yeah, difference maker. maker. Difference maker and absolute stalwart on that defensive line. And here he is with Julie Donalds. John Allen now going into your seventh season. You're like the longest tenure vet. Second behind Tress. That, well, oh, how dare I disrespect <laughs> Tress, right? <laughs> He's a man, got to give him his credit first. Very, very much so. Um, and we love Tress and everything he brings to this team. Where have things changed the biggest for you since 2017? Since 2017, I feel like the biggest thing that I had to learn was how to work smarter, not harder. You know, as a young guy, you recover fast. The aches and pains go away a little bit faster. So you can just beat your body up, work as hard as you want, and then you'll recover. And it's not so much the case anymore, you know what I mean? I need more time to recover. I just can't go crazy and beat myself up because then it's gonna put me out, you know? So I just had to find ways to overcome older age and I say older age, like I'm, 20, <laughs> I'm 28, but Well, 70, I mean, yeah. given you're like one of the oldest in the room, yeah, I mean, yeah. you might as well have some gray hairs going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I, trust me, I do. <laughs> Finish this sentence for me. What is the 2023 season gonna be for John Allen? It's going to be my best year yet. What does that mean? Where? How? In every aspect, I think you're going to see a player that the league's never seen before. And that's the mindset I'm, you know, moving forward with. 
All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. A common takeaway so far from the OTA sessions is a renewed sense of excitement around the team. On the defensive side, the commanders are looking to build off a unit that finished third in total defense and seventh in points against last season. And you know that's got Fred cooking. Time for Fred's Fired Up, presented by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the Washington Command. Fellas, I'm fired up, and today I'm cooking with fish grease. You know why? Because my D tap is out of Rodney Dangerfield of the NFL. They get you no respect. How could you What's not respect, respect John Nelly? Because I respect that man's name. Respect, 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 respect man, man. the house of pain. And if they won't talk for themselves to get this love, I would do the talk, brother. First of all, they played together in college. Mm-hmm. They dominate the SEC. Mm-hmm. They got to the NFL. They dominate the wow. NFL. And wow. all they do is make sure your quarterback get grass stains right. all over his jersey. Wow. And now they want their just do respect. Preach, brother. I'm sorry. Me and you used to be a great duo. Not great as this duo. We have the best de tackle duo in the game. I gotta ask one question. Ask it. What type of fish grease that is? Who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is new fish grease right here. This is new fish grease. You know, pop green is popping. And so at the end of the day, this is what I'm going to tell you. 31 teams out there, beware. Beware of these d because they want their respect. They're hungry, too. Mm-hmm. No you way. heard what we said. Deuces. So, Fred. Yeah. You mentioned a new fish grease. Yes, it's a I big do. deal for you. <laughs> it's, it's a deal between old and new grease. Oh, okay. now. So if you're talking new grease, yeah. you're talking about these defensive linemen helping out DB. Yes. How much do they help? Like Sean to tell you, they get us paid. Mm-hmm. All right? the, the reason quarterbacks make mistakes in the NFL mm-hmm. is because they're uncomfortable. All right? Defensive linemen make them uncomfortable. At the end of the day, you have to work with the back end and the front end together. Yep. And that's why we didn't have a lot of turnovers last year because the front end and the back end was not connected. I think with this new young group, mm-hmm. they're going to help each other. The corner's going to hold the, the coverage a little longer to get him time to get to the quarterback, and they're going to make the quarterback uneasy so he can throw it to us. What do you think? Well, I, I think when you have a D line that can take the pressure off the pass because they also can stop the run. You don't have to worry about being a corner, getting running to somebody, yeah. running the ball, and you yeah. one. That defense allows you to play zone sometimes. Yeah. It allows you to play man. And if you know you're in zone, then you can peek a little bit, then cheat, you can a little bit. Yeah. cheat a little bit. So yeah. that gives you the flexibility to play multiple schemes within the system if you have a good D line. Yeah. And Tana, I would imagine, too, that as an offensive player, when you know you've got a defense out there that's Mm going to put the pressure on, that can turn over the football, that's going to help you guys as well. No doubt. I mean, and one of the things I've always talked, you know, about highly when it comes to those guys, you know, I love to be a receiver sitting there on that sideline knowing that, hey, these guys are going to get us a turnover. Mm -hmm. I remember having a guy, we all know him, Sean Taylor, we played with Mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Sean told me plenty of times we came off the field, good play, Tanner, get ready, because we're going to come back and we're going to get y'all the ball back. So you love having that. You know, awareness knowing that my D line is going to force some, our secondary tight, they're going to force some. Before you know it, man, we win in the game. Yep. Jack Del Rio's talked about forcing more turnovers. Mm-hmm. It's huge for this defense this yeah. year. How do they do that? Uh, go draft me before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go draft me. Come on, man. Go to Mississippi State, State guys. You just pay it. Don't pay for it. Pay it. <laughs> That's the manual for the side, man, right there. Like, like I, this is how you do it by getting these guys, getting them together right now. Mm-hmm. And the D line, knowing that we got some young studs in the back. We got, we still got St. Jude. We still got Fuller. Yep. We still got these guys. And these guys, don't have to relearn this defense. Mm-hmm. Like they, they don't pick up where they left off. And we were just talking. They was top 10 basically in yeah. everything yeah, without that. taking the ball away. When they start to take the ball away, they become special. That's and cute. when you can win first down with your guys up front, because in order to get a turnover, you need quarterbacks to be in third long. Yeah. So if you can win mm-hmm. first down or get them at any point during that series backed up, and now you know that's third and long, third and 10 plus, corners love that because now the ball got to stay in the air. And we got to And some of the, the things that we always point out as offensive guys, if you're allowed to dictate the flow of the game, you know what I mean? That's give, that gives you a greater chance to win. And so if our defense be the defense that they was last year, yeah. with, with yep. a couple more added talent, and they dictate every down, because yep. they was they was the dictators. Yep. They yep. were the guys that was rushing. Yep. They were the guys that was giving our offenses chances mm-hmm. to be in ball games. When you dictate the game, you give yourself a greater chance. Yeah. Well, we got to remind you, we have great content coming from this studio each and every single day. Of course, it starts each and every single Monday when we have one-on-one player interviews. Then the Command Center podcast comes your way on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. This show, Command Center, you can see every Wednesday. Tennis takes. Hey, hey, for yeah. Tennis, what are you going to talk about? I'm going to talk a little activity <laughs> that we're doing all season. Ooh, my Ooh, favorite. Fred knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you did too much in all season. Actually, Fred. Y'all <laughs> too long, man. And then Logan lives in the comments each and every Friday.
Some big news from over the weekend with the Cardinals releasing former All-Pro receiver DeAndre Hopkins. During his 10-year career, Hopkins recorded 71 touchdowns and more than 11,000 yards receiving. The Commanders will host the Cardinals in Week 1 this season, which means one less weapon to worry about in Week 1. Thank but God. Depending yeah. on where he goes, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe we see him later on in the year. And we were having a pretty spirited debate as yep. to where, where he should go. Yeah, yeah. If I'm him, I'm calling Andy Reid up on the phone, oh. him and Patrick, and I'm trying to get to Kansas City so I can be that number one receiver mm -hmm. with Kelsey and tight end. I, I think I, that's perfect. I, I can see that. That's yeah. a good place. But what? Pay yourself up with another great receiver. How about Devontae Adams in Vegas? You know, you got Jimmy G. But the X factor could be what if Tom Brady, oh. who's buying into the team, Ooh. decided he wanted to come back and play? We all be drunk. But I'm just saying, Devontae <laughs> Adams, Red Pro. Wherever he goes, I don't want to see him. You know, as long as he's not to do. That's all I care. So when you look at the commander's schedule this yeah, season, yeah. the top three receiver rooms that Washington has to face. Um, I got Philly. I have we, the Dolphins. I think, Dolphins, we, all, I I think, have, I I think we all agree. I have, Philly is unanimous to number yeah. one group. We yeah. think that we yeah. got to face. Me and Smooth, we might not have uh, mm -hmm. stayed up too late if we had to play those guys. But Philly by far with Brown and Smith are uh, incredible. Yeah. I love any team that the Cheetahs on, the Dolphins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I pull my hands hey, hey, about this. <laughs> well, let me tell you something about the Cheetahs. You're right. I have watched the game with him play, and my hamstring got pulled on. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how much would it keep you right. up at night with right. him and Waddle? I think yeah. that's super scary. Man. And let me tell you now, Seattle. Yeah. Yes. Metcalf and, and those guys. Smith and Jigma, Jigma, who was the best receiver in the draft this year. I, I yeah. think that's going to be Lock a very... Is, Lock is a, he, he one of those guys Lock, who don't get enough credit. He don't get no credit. I yeah. played with his father. So at the end of the day, I think those three are scary for any defensive backfield. Not just ours. Hey, Gino, give Gino backfield. some credit. He threw the ball in that league. He yeah. the ball like the league the passing. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, 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 they wrote Gino <laughs> off. He didn't write back. I'm <laughs> with that. If you're talking about Seattle, you got to talk about the one guy you were just talking about who could surprise us this year. Yeah. Eltrick? Oh, uh, Eltrick. Yeah. yeah, that's what you're talking now, about. This is a kid played at Western Michigan, and and me and, a, me and a good friend of mine, he who went to Western Michigan, we talked about him a couple of years ago. Right. He has a body type like a uh, Jamar Chase. Chase. Yeah. Jamar Chase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I saw him do his senior year in college, I think, man, if he get a chance to clean belt of health and he can come out here and play on this level, play on that level in this league. So you're saying problem. Seattle got four yeah. wide receivers. They're they four deep. That's scary. That's scary. About, one of the things about this league as a whole, it's a lot of young receivers out there yeah. on a lot of teams. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's one of those guys that I'm going to be you know, keeping an eye on. Mm -hmm. Always great work with these guys. Fred Smooth, Sean Springs, Tana. Santana Moss, thanks for being with us here on Command Center. We'll see you next time. Now you look presentable. <laughs> <laughs> now you look like a preacher's son. Now you get it all bad, right? <laughs> get out, friend. <laughs> You're on the camera, too. <laughs> I don't know why they are moving around. That is not. You know. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all guys still doing here? This is not a Marvel movie. We got no extra clips. But if you like what you're seeing, like and subscribe to the Commander's YouTube channel. We'll be right there waiting on you.